Hello, welcome to the Keyence IX training module. Today we'll discuss how to use the IX's step tool. This is one of the most commonly used tools available with the IX. The sensor measures the height difference between two points on a target, eliminating the need for multiple sensors or back-end calculation. The difference in height between two points on the master part is then compared to the difference between the same points on subsequent parts to determine an OK or no good reading. Today we'll talk about how to use the step tool in scan mode. In scan mode, you'll first complete your detection setup and master registration. Then it's time to add our step tool. Click add tool and select step. Then press OK. Now click on the first point you want to measure the height of. As the diagram on screen shows, the step tool will subtract the height of point B from the height of point A. I'm using this IX demo tool. So for this example, I'll choose my tallest point as point A next. I'll pick this other point as point B, and I see that the difference in height is measured as 4 millimeters. You also have the option to change the size of each point to small, normal, or large. Choosing large can lead to more stable readings, while small is more useful for measuring precise features. We'll leave our points as normal for now, then press next. If you want to go back and change the size or position of your points, you can click on measurement position settings. You can also adjust the reading of the measurement using the zero offset feature. Let's say this is my master part and I want to read how far off future parts are from this master. I have my shift value set to zero, so I can click the zero offset button and that will change my reading to zero. Now I can set my tolerances based on the master part. Let's say I have a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. I can set my high or upper limit to 0.5 and my low or lower limit to negative 0.5. I'll hit test to show you how this works. In test mode, we can view a live image of the sensor. If I take the measure piece under point B out of our demo tool, the step measurement rises far above our tolerances and we get a no good reading. If I swap the targets under points A and B, the measurement becomes negative eight millimeters because we're now subtracting a larger height value from a smaller one. I'll put the demo tool back the way we had it and then press end test. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll click clear to bring back our original measured values. I'll also change my high and low limits to 4.5 and 3.5, respectively. In the extended functions, we have more options for our step tool. First, you have the option to specify your measurement range. This can help speed up the processing time of a program by limiting how much of the vertical area the sensor is scanning. For example, if you want the IX to ignore any values outside of plus or minus 5 millimeters from the measured point, you can set the range to plus or minus 5 millimeters. You can see visually what areas are excluded for each point as you change your range by observing the red and blue overlay. We'll leave our range at the default, then click close. You can also rename your step tool. I'm measuring the right side of my demo piece, so I'll name this tool right side, and you can see here the name has changed. You can also perform a two-point calibration, which is used when the measured values don't quite match the real-world values you'd expect. In most cases, you do not need to enable this. For more information on this function, please refer to the dedicated video on two-point calibration. For now, I'll press close here, then OK. Now we can press next to step four, and because our outputs aren't relevant for this video, I'll click complete settings and then yes. Now that I'm back on my main screen, I'll put the sensor in run mode and you can see we're able to measure our part and determine a good versus no good measurement. Thank you for watching.